All right, let's move on to try and solve for P now. So this problem is a little bit challenging. This is one of the more difficult problems to solve. And it's because of the fractions. And there's a couple different ways you could realistically approach these. And I'll go through both. The first method is just adding and subtracting fractions. You know, just keep following it the same way. We want to move the variables to the same side. This side is positive, so we'll move them over here. So I will add 3p to each side. So you get that 16. These cancel out. Minus 3p plus 3p is 0. And we get 2 thirds p plus 3p. But I'm going to put 3p with a denominator of 3. So over here, 3p is the same thing as 9p over 3. Notice all I did was multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. And that way, I gave them the same denominator so that I can actually add these fractions. And I have plus 5 over here. So now adding these fractions, I get, well, 2 plus 9 is 11 up top. And the denominator always stays the same once it is the same. So I get 11 thirds P. And then plus 5. So I have to cancel out that plus 5 now so I can get P by itself. So I will subtract 5 on each side. And what I get is 11 is 11p 11 over 3. Now, I want to get rid of this 11 thirds that's attached to p. So you can do it in two steps. You have 11 times p and then divided by 3. I would recommend getting rid of the division first and then getting rid of the multiplication. You can do it either way, but this way has always made more sense to me. It just tends to be a little bit cleaner with less fractions. So I'm going to multiply by 3 to cancel out this division here. Since 3 divided by 3, these just cancel and go away. And you just get 11p. And over here, you get 33. Now, last step, you can divide each side by 11 to cancel out that multiplication. And what we get is that p is equal to 3. A nice round whole number. And from here, we can check our work. But you can see this method is a little bit tedious because you have to add and subtract fractions. Right? In this case, we were adding. Sometimes you will have to subtract fractions. So there is another method that we can approach this with. And it's what I tend to use in practice. I tend to not do adding and subtracting fractions in practice just because it takes a long time. And I like to think of the most efficient, fastest way of solving these if I have the time. So... Let me rewrite this. And basically what I always ask my students is which part of this problem seems the most difficult. And almost unanimously, students will always point to the fraction because fractions are more difficult than whole numbers. So the question is, can we get rid of a fraction so that we don't even have to deal with it? And you want to think in terms of opposites. Effectively, we are dividing by 3 here. We have 2 times p and then divided by 3. So how do you cancel division? You do the opposite operation. You multiply. So if I multiplied this by 3, then I can just cancel that fraction out, and I don't have to deal with fractions at all. And in fact, this is what I do in practice. I just get rid of all the fractions and deal solely with whole numbers. So to cancel out division by 3, I can multiply. But remember, you have to multiply everything by 3. So this gets multiplied by 3, this gets multiplied by 3, this gets multiplied by 3, and so does this. Now, you could write the 3 next to all the terms. A lot of times that can get a little sloppy. Um, so if you want it to be neater, one thing you can do is put them in parentheses on each side and then just distribute on both cases. So as long as everything gets multiplied by 3, that's what matters. But I think in the beginning, you know, maybe leave yourself some space. It's simpler, I think, just to put 3 next to everything. That way you won't make some of the more common mistakes. So 3 times 16 is 48. 3 times 3p would be 9p, and we're subtracting. Now, the whole point of this, we have 3 up top and 3 below, so they cancel, and you just get 2p, and then plus 5 times 3 is 15. And now it's the same problem, just no fractions. So much simpler to solve. Put all the variables here. So add 9p on each side. 
you get 48 is 11p plus 15. Subtract 15 on each side, and you get that 33 is 11p, which is what we had, which leads to p being equal to 3. So we got the same answer in both cases. And that's another way to check your work. If you solve it with two completely different methods and get the same answer, then that's another way to feel confident that you're doing it correctly. At this point, you would want to plug it in. I'm not going to do it here. Um, you can definitely do it. You just have to deal with multiplying fractions. It's not too bad in this question because when you, pl when you plug in P equals 3 here, the 3s just cancel out. You get 2 plus 5, which is 7. Over here, you get 16 minus 9, which is also 7. So when you plug it in, you do get the right work. So I'm not going to write it out by hand, but I at least talked you through it. If you need to rewind and rewatch, feel free to do so. All right, let's look at one more. This will be our last problem. And I'm going to solve this using my second method that I showed you from above. Because like I said, I'm not a big fan of adding and subtracting fractions if I can avoid it. So I'm just going to get rid of the fraction in one step. So let me write this again. So 2 minus 1 half n equals 3n plus 16. And notice I left space for all my numbers here because I'm going to multiply to cancel out this fraction. And we have 1 half times n. So if you don't recognize that you're dividing by 2, you could rewrite this by multiplying fractions. 1 times n is n. 2 times 1 is 2. This is also just n over 2. So if you want to write it like that, that's totally fine as well. It might be more obvious that way. But regardless, we are dividing by 2, and we need to cancel that out. So we are going to multiply, since multiplication is the opposite of division, we will multiply everything by 2, and that will cancel out our fraction. So here we get 4, and here 2 divided by 2, these cancel, and you just get 1n, or just n. This is 6n, and this is 32. We will now move all the n's to the same side, the side with more. So to cancel out minus n, we will add n to each side. And so you get 4 is 7n plus 32. Let's make a little bit more room and pull this up here. So 4 is 7n plus 32. We need to get rid of the 32 so that we can get n by itself. So we will subtract, cancel out that addition. And 4 minus 32 would be negative 28. This is 7n. Now to cancel out multiplication, divide everything by 7. And you get that minus 4 is equal to n. And let's check this one just so that you can feel more confident checking these. So n is negative 4. So let's see. Let's use green. So check that n is minus 4. We're just going to plug it in. So you get that 2 minus 1 half of negative 4 equals 3 times negative 4 plus 16. Well, 3 and negative 4 makes negative 12, and 16 minus 12 is 4. Over here, we have 2 minus a negative, or you could think of it as multiplying two negatives, but the negatives cancel here because you have two of them. So you get a plus, and then you have 4 times a half, and half of 4 is just 2, and it is true that 2 and 2 make 4. So we can feel confident that n definitely equals negative 4 here. 